A risk register is a project risk management tool. It is used to identify potential risks in a project or an organization, sometimes to comply with our regulations, but mainly to be aware of potential problems that can derail expected results. The risk register includes all the information about each identified risk, such as the nature of that risk, the level, to whom it belongs, and what are the mitigation measures established to respond to it. It acts as a repository of all identified risks and includes additional information of the nature of the risk, the reference, the owner, mitigation measures. We're going to simplify this model in the workbook and only include those columns relevant to the quantitative project risk analysis. By simply Googling images for risk heat maps or risk matrices or project risk maps, you will find thousands of colorful matrices representations of these ideas. A risk register can contain many different items. There are recommendations for the content of the risk register made by the Project Management Institute, Body of Knowledge, the PNBOC. ISO 31000 version 2009 does not use the term risk register. However, it states that risks must be documented. A typical risk register contains a risk category to group similar risks, an identification number of the risk breakdown structure, a brief description or the name of the risk to make it easy to discuss, the probability of occurrence, the impact, that is the consequence or severity if the, if the event actually occurs, the score or risk rating, which is the multiplication of probability by impact, mitigation steps, contingent response, contingency, which is the budget assigned to the contingent response. We will argue with an example why a qualitative risk register or heat map that only tries to multiply frequency by severity to obtain a quantitative risk register is a very poor and incomplete representation of the risk of a project. In our example, we start with a list of risks in a project. Take a look at the list of 20 present hazards that have already been identified for this particular civil construction project. We will not delve into the previous steps of creating this list. Certainly, by the time this record of lists or risks has been created with quality and consistency, many hours and teamwork have passed to devise and agree that this list of 20 risks represents adequately a comprehensive list of risks to a project. We will also assume that the information regarding its quantification has also been carefully developed and proposed. A specific criticism with qualitative risk maps is that they do not adequately address risks that can occur more than once in a project. When we add a probability distribution function to correctly quantify the frequency, we correct for this weakness. We also add distribution functions to quantify the severity or impact of each one of the risks. The addition of these two pieces will not allow us to run a Monte Carlo simulation on the risk register and obtain a distribution curve of the total risk of the project. We can then analyze the comprehensive risk of the project and correctly classify the relative importance of each individual risk. You will notice that although this risk register mentions the two main components to construct a famous qualitative risk heat maps, frequency and severity, no column is shown regarding the categorization of those risks by means of a qualified assignment of colors, which is essentially what qualitative risk analysis does. We do not believe that qualitative risk analysis using heat maps and color categorizations is a robust or adequate methodology for the risk treatment of a project. In the next lesson, we will show you why. If you're just as convinced as I am about it, you can skip the next lesson. Thank you.